Hello and welcome to Shenandoah National Park. I'm intern Ben and today we're at Big Meadows. I'd like to talk to you about Skyline Drive, its history, how it came to be, and the people involved with its creation. To start, Skyline Drive is one of the most important pieces of Shenandoah National Park. It runs 105 miles along the entire length of the park and all of its twists and turns are designed to maximize the effect of nature and wildlife that you can see driving along its length. Behind me, here in Big Meadows, you can see a pretty significant portion of Skyline Drive, and this part right here will actually be important to talk about as we continue on about its history. So where does Skyline Drive start? Well, to begin, we have to understand that Skyline Drive and Shenandoah National Park are two halves of one much larger whole. Without these two pieces, neither one would function appropriately. So to start with the drive, we have to start with the park. The park's conception will begin in a, roughly the 1920s, during a time of great prosperity and wealth here in America. Automobiles were becoming much more popular, and eastern cities were growing at a very large rate. Almost all of the national parks up to that point were in western states, and here in the east we had almost no national parks. Acadia would be the first up in the northeast. So the National Park Service wanted to create new parks for these growing cities and growing communities here in the east. Shenandoah would be one of the first ones selected and built in this area. They wanted to expand upon this automotive industry that was exploding here in the United States, growing at a rapid rate. At the time, in 1925, roughly 20 million cars were on the road. Only 15% of the American population had access to motor vehicles. Today, there are over 270 million cars on the road. That means 80% of Americans should have access to vehicles today. And the NPS plan for this, building uh, Shenandoah here with Skyline Drive as its main feature that can be accessed by motor vehicles during all times of the year. So this was planned as, uh, by a committee that was created by the National Park Service. This was the Southern Appalachian National Park Committee, and they surveyed a great deal of lands and areas in the southeast United States. Here in the Shenandoah Valley, a number of towns, businesses, and local leaders came together to form an incorporated business so that they could attract that National Park Committee here to Shenandoah and try to build this national park. They are known as the Shenandoah Valley Incorporated. This group would get in touch with one of the leading people here in Shenandoah and one of our most scenic sites, Skyland Resort, hosted by George Freeman Pollock. He was an eccentric man who wanted to create a much larger space for his Skyland Resort, and he hoped that he could continue to be the concessionaire there and increase his business and also his fame. He used some of his contacts, some of which were people who resided or had homes at Skyland in Washington to encourage that National Park Committee to come here to Shenandoah National Park. The Shenandoah Valley Incorporated and George Freeman Pollock worked together to create spaces, accommodations, and resources that that park committee could use while exploring Shenandoah National Park. They hosted horseback rides, created trails, created lookout towers even that the Shenandoah, the South Appalachian National Park Committee could use to explore the park and its many diverse areas. Following this, the park committee proposed three different sites. Here, Shenandoah National Park was one of the selected. Mammoth Cave down in Tennessee was also selected. And Great Smoky Mountains in North Carolina and Tennessee was another selected location. In 1925, under the presidency of Calvin Coolidge, this legislation passed and created those three different parks. But they weren't officially made until much later. First, they had to acquire the land, and this was done without any federal money. No federal provision was made for acquiring this land, and all of it had to be generated by the state. The state had to acquire the funds and then purchase the land from local residents and other individuals here in the area. Because of this, it would take a significant amount of time to generate the funds needed to properly purchase the land and acquire the land from those mountain residents. So after Coolidge's second term ends, another president will be brought into the mix to encourage and further develop Skyline Drive and Shenandoah National Park. Herbert Hoover, before he is even inaugurated, understands that he will need somewhere to get away from DC, the heat 
and the heat of the White House, um, with all of the pressures of the media and other political endeavors. So he decides to build here in Shenandoah, Rapidan Camp, seated on the Rapidan River. He will use this as a way to get away from DC, up into the mountain air, a place where he can fish, spend time with family and friends, as well as with other politicians and even foreign heads of state to discuss political matters and also spend time to create better connections between these different places, these different countries. He is a huge proponent of the park. He enjoys getting outside and believes that all Americans should do so. Because of this, he will also encourage the building of Skyline Drive. And this piece you've seen behind me, as I referenced before, will be one of the first sections built between Rapidan Camp to the south and Skyland to our north. This stretch of road will be unpaved during Hoover's time as president, and the visitors that come to see it only get a taste of what the Skyline Drive will eventually become with its overlooks and well-manicured sidelines. Hoover will also take a million dollars of federal money and use this as a drought relief program for Virginia farmers who are affected by a severe drought just before the Great Depression begins. They will be the first people to begin clearing out this road and constructing Skyline Drive. Hoover will use a million dollars of federal relief money for drought affected farmers here in Virginia. These people need help uh, just before the Great Depression as the United States is starting to fall into that Great Depression time period. Unfortunately, this effort will not be enough to win him the re-election, and a third president will enter the creation and building of Skyline Drive and Shenandoah National Park. Franklin D. Roosevelt will be elected as the next president, and he will serve for a majority of the Great Depression, helping the American people come out of it. During his first 100 days in office, he creates a number of New Deal programs, including the Civilian Conservation Corps. In 1933, in May, the Civilian Conservation Corps will arrive here in Shenandoah National Park. Just over my shoulder to my left, the Civilian Conservation Corps would have their camp here in Big Meadows. This camp and the work that they did here across Shenandoah National Park was all about making the Skyline Drive, flattening it out and preparing it for paving later on. They would flatten steep mountainsides, level off different areas. All of this was done by, this, by the Civilian Conservation Corps and they created different things like overlooks, fire roads, and trails throughout the park, as well as our picnic grounds too. All of these different pieces are integral parts of Shenandoah National Park, and it would not be the same place without the hard work and dedication that these boys had to their jobs. FDR would visit them a number of times, coming to the park to check on their progress, bringing the media with him to encourage people across the United States that work was getting done and development was happening even during the midst of the Great Depression. Here in Shenandoah as well, ahead of me, there was also the location where FDR would host the dedication of the park in 1936. It was a grand event inviting the CCC boys who had worked so hard, thousands of them had come to see the president speak about the hard work that they did, as well as people from the surrounding communities and even people from Washington. All of them came to hear Franklin D. Roosevelt speak about Shenandoah National Park and inaugurate it as an official park within Virginia. So 80 years have passed since that inauguration, since the dedication of Shenandoah National Park. A number of things have changed. The trees have grown up. A number of the plants have grown. Some of the things that they transplanted here have grown up and been, become something different and more beautiful than Shenandoah was before. The overlooks and things next to the drive are all things incorporated beautifully within the nature and within the man-made structures here. The places where the CCC worked so hard to make sure that that nature and that man-made structure merged seamlessly and beautifully together to create Shenandoah National Park. So many people worked hard to make this park happen, to make sure that it could exist. Three different presidents, the early National Park Service, businessmen from Shenandoah, private contractors, and thousands of boys working for the CCC. All of them came together to make something beautiful that we still have and cherish here today. So as you come to Shenandoah National Park, make sure you remember all of that beautiful history as you view the nature. We have just as much cultural history as we do natural history here in this beautiful park. Maybe we can ask some of our rangers and some of our fellow guests what they see here at the park and what Skyline Drive means to them. 
I really like Skyline Drive because of the sunset in like the valley it gives under. I I like when I um, took pictures of the Skyline Drive sunset. Uh, Skyline Drive uh, is, is, is a really cool thing, a neat part of the park that a lot of people uh, get to explore. Uh, what it is to me, it is a window to really to the past, to the, the glory days of the National Park Service when you could go 30, 35 miles an hour nice and leisurely on a very windy mountain road. And it's relaxing, it's enjoyable. It's, uh, it, it's not a rushed thing where people used to come from the cities here and they, they feel that, that urban rush and here it all melts away on Skyline Drive. That's what that means to me. No, we uh, moved up here from Florida about a year ago and first thing I did was purchase an annual pass to the park so that we could come up here and enjoy it. It's such a relaxing, beautiful area to come to. And when you come, you just leave the rest of the world behind and do your own thing. And just, just feel like you're back in nature. But this is, this is my favorite place to visit. It's my favorite place to come to. And I can't imagine going anywhere else. To me, it's a calming experience when I'm coming to work. Whether it's a sunny day or the clouds rolling off the mountain through the fog, every time I drive Skyline Drive, it brings me a reminder that I get to come here and work at Shenandoah National Park and experience the drive and all of its beauty throughout the year. Thank you for joining me for this program. I hope you enjoyed learning about Skyline Drive. If you have any questions or would like to learn more about Shenandoah, please visit our website or download our park app. I'm, ben, I'm intern Ben here at Shenandoah National Park. Thank you for joining us in the Big Meadow.